Hello, welcome to the Friday, February 15th, 2019 edition of the Sand and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. You probably have heard in the past about problems with PDFs that are embedding links to SMB file shares. Don't see them really a lot, but it is actually a pretty easy exploit in the sense that then the user will try to connect outbound to the SMB file share, of course, download the document, and in some circumstances, even pass along hashes of credentials in order to attempt to essentially authenticate against this remote file share. More or less anywhere where you would have added a HTTP URL, you could also insert an SMB URL. Now, often, of course, this ability has been disabled in recent years, but PDFs are still one of these spots where it is sometimes possible and where this trick works. Xavier ran into one such document and took a closer look at it. So if you want to see how it worked in this particular case, how to analyze documents like this, well, take a look. If you're running a QNAP appliance, these are these storage devices, you may want to take a look at the host file on the QNAP device and check it for any odd entries. There has been some so far really undefined malware going around, which apparently does manifest itself by additional entries in your Etsy hosts file. Now, if you have one of these devices, you also should definitely update the version of the operating system of the device. Also update all installed applications and manually update the malware remover that is included with this device. Apparently another sort of side effect of the malware that's being spotted by QNAP users is that it disables the automatic malware remover update. At this point, very little is known about how the malware actually gets on the device, but very typically these devices have multiple web applications installed that of course have often vulnerabilities. Also in the past, weak passwords were often used uh, to attack these devices and other operating systems like uh, very famously a uh, few years back uh, when Shellshock came out, these QNAP devices were attacked using this a particular exploit. And of course, you should not expose these devices to the open internet. Now, if you do run into an infected device, of course, I would love to take a quick look at the malware that's running on them. And remember those bomb threats that went around to schools and other organizations a few months ago? Well, the FBI today announced that two arrests were made in this case, one in the United States and one in the United Kingdom. Both uh, individuals are part of what they're calling themselves the Apophis hacker group. They also are being accused of defacing a number of websites. Again, some of focusing on schools and universities. As part of their extortion attempts, they also launched some denial of service attacks against businesses where they then asked for money in order to stop the denial of service attack. Back in January, the FBI warned that hackers from China are attacking managed service providers in order to access networks that are managed by these companies. Managed service providers or MSPs are often used to outsource part of your IT functions. And of course, a lot of the work is done remotely. So once an attacker is able to break into an MSP's network, they're typically able to access a number of different companies. Now, back in January, it all sort of pointed to a more sophisticated, maybe nation state type of attacks because the targets really were intellectual property. So the data was stolen from these companies. Looks like the criminals are now catching on to this trend and ransomware is now being distributed via MSPs. Apparently the attacks are, are taking advantage of vulnerabilities in software that's specifically popular with MSPs. And uh, these are sort of these typical software packages that are often overlooked when it comes to patching because they're 
not really very widely used. Only very specialized companies are using them and uh, creating them. So Wallabies are not very well published. And of course, many users of this software, because it's complex and requires a lot of configuration, are somewhat hesitant to update it. Well, that's it for today. I will make a package challenge live sometime Friday, probably early tomorrow. So watch Twitter for that to go live. Also, if you have some time on the weekend, why not leave a good review on iTunes or whatever podcast channel you're using to retrieve this podcast. That's it. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.